<laughs> you walk uh, one up down in front of the field. You walk one day in the in the forest, and then you hear a noise. You look down, a person tells you, "Can you please get off my back?" <laughs> and you just step on the person who's wearing funny, silly threads. Apparently, um, he was uh, decided to go outside and just uh, have some fun and go out bird watching. And you just happen to step on him. That sir is a ghillie suit, and it, it is a um, uh, the main objective of the ghillie suit is to break up your 3D image out in the forest. Oops. The um, uh, and the other idea is to blend into the surroundings so that um, uh, other people, mainly other people, won't be able to see you and use the normal vegetation. Now, the ghillie has two ways of spelling. The ghillie can be spelled either G-H-I-L-L-I-E or G-I-L-L-I-E. On the Merriam-Webster's uh, di online dictionary, a ghillie is a Scottish um, uh, fishing, fish or hunting guide. The, skill, the ghillie suit uh, comes from that term because during the uh, time, the uh, during the way back in the around medieval for the Scottish, they um, uh, they had uh, shepherds were would wear this type of suit to um, uh, watch and wait for any other poachers or animals that might uh, try to hurt their sheep to um, uh, come and kill them. And so they would just wait, wait, and then when they get close enough, they'll jump out and pounce, either kill or scare off the uh, would be attackers that are on the sheep. Later on. Lords, um, uh, lords or nobles of the Scottish um, uh, family, have become um, started to use the um, uh, these uh, ghillie guides to um, uh, was it to what's it called? Oh, yeah, to protect their uh, to protect their lands and uh, animals that are within the lands. Normally, uh, people um, uh, would try to hunt only hunt the land or the nobles' um, uh, animals if they cannot feed their own families. Uh, they would feed their families. They would, uh, same thing, they would just uh, sit and wait for the um, uh, ghillies, or no, for the uh, people to uh, come and pounce on them. Because it was uh, punishable by death if, the, um, uh, if one person decides to hunt on the land of the nobles. Another, um, uh, later on, later on uh, Lord Lovat, Lovat decided to um, uh, create a brigade or com two companies of these highly skilled uh, ghillies and uh, they took part in World War One. They were one of the best units out of um, uh, the whole entire British, uh, com the British um, uh, military to gather the most amount of information and that really uh, became more exponential when they used um, uh, uh, telescopic sights on their um, uh, rifles, aka the uh, scopes. They, they now had the ability to go within the enemy lines to, um, uh, kill, to kill enemy commanders without um, uh, ever being seen. They can even sit there days on end without the enemy noticing that they're there. And this later continued throughout World War II when they're going up against the Nazis. And once again, they proved themselves to be one of the most successful units at gathering information and taking out enemy commanders. Now, another part of the uh, and they continue to serve throughout today. Now, one of the uses is the military, almost all militaries over the world have adopted, um, for their snipers or program, they have adopted the ghillie suit because of the ability to hide in plain sight against um, human eyes. One, on the, um, uh, one article of the Smithsonian um, uh, Museum is a uh, deceased sniper uh, autobiography, or autobiography, states that uh, there's two phases the first phase is like the marksman's phase, which they do completely do mark, uh, completely complete their shooting. The second um, uh, phase is uh, making their ghillie. Well, while they're doing the first phase, while they're making the um, marksman, they actually uh, could make a little bit here and there of their uh, ghillie suits. And uh, um, the second phase, um, uh, they're, they had to don on their ghillie suits. Like they immediately, once they got off boot, uh, off of their like a boot camp, they immediately don their ghillie suits, and their commander or their instructors will tell them how shit their ghillie suits were, and then have them uh, crawl through. It's called a ghillie wash, crawl through <coughs> a muddy bank, and do various other games to give the ghillie suit a more earthly tone. Now, after that, um, uh, the the civilian market became more interested due to uh, the glorifications of war, such as call, the Call of Duty video games, and everybody started liking the ghillie suits. And so it became a little bit more pronounced in uh, airsofting and paintballing. 
one of the um, airsofts I when I went airsofting it was hilarious. I saw this uh, little kid in full deck out ghillie, like unlike mine where mine's uh, considered a half ghillie because there's only half of a side. <laughs> like full on ghillie is like having pretty much what my um, uh, head piece is. It's a full on ghillie. And he was, it was funny, he was like a little five foot uh, kid and it's like this little barn of thread. Just <laughs> so funny. Sadly, he was, he, was not, he was not against my team, he was on my team, so I couldn't really see how affected it was. And then uh, I'm gonna tell you, then after that I'm gonna show you how to make a ghillie. The first materials you would need is a burlap sack or um, a pre-dyed um, uh, threads, which I did for mine because I was too lazy to make one, or to make the, use a burlap sack. Next is a uh, battle dress uniform. You need, um, you can either do a one piece, which is a flight suit or a, a two-piece and a, um, a hat or a hood, which you need a, um, a pretty much a, a, a shirt and a pants. Then after that, you need some threads, or no, you need some needles, and these are called straight pins. They are they they save me a lot of time because they hold the netting in place. Next, you would need thread, or you can use unwaxed um, uh, dental floss, which you can find at the local pharmacy stores. And they are cheap, they, uh, things like one dollar, you could get 100 yards. Then uh, the next is uh, you need a um, uh, uh, netting. They could, be, um, they could be any type of netting. You could do big, small, but usually um, uh, you want like a, somewhere in the medium range, which they don't really have an exact medium range. Next after that is refinement. For if you've got the uh, jute bags, if you got the um, uh, jute bags, you make them uh, tear them apart and uh, make them getting little clumps of threads, or you can get like the buy, like I said before, pre-made uh, threads, pre-made uh, pre-made threads. So then for the jute uh, for the jute thread, you would have to um, uh, dye them accordingly to the colors that you would want for the um, scenery that you're going to. Next is making the gilly. Now you choose the um, uh, depending on what you want, you choose the BDU and then the um, uh, colors you're going to do for the environment that you're going to be in. And then after that, uh, you would uh, then uh, cut the threading or the netting uh, as a rectangle piece. If you're doing it for the top, you should cut two long rectangles and then a back rectangle so that you can just uh, net or sew down the um, uh, thread or the netting onto your um, uh, back. And then you would have this type of knot, or it doesn't matter, that you could do any type of knot as long as you secure the um, netting to your um, back. And then after, here's the back side of it, I use shoe glue to help uh, reinforce so that it won't come undone. And you can do two ways, you can either do like a little spot, uh, from spot to spot to spot, or you get a really long thread, and then just uh, go from one knot to another, to another, to another, and then get you on until you run out of thread. After that, you would use um, uh, this type of knot with five um, uh, five uh, thread or five strands. Of either you can do where I did, where I chose one of each color, or you can do like um, uh, how you have like a different color coded um, areas, like for your BDUs. Then after that, um, here is what the finish, what it looks like finish on the back side, and here is what it looks like um, from uh, for the front from the um, uh, other side finished, and here's the work side page. <laughs> In conclusion, um, uh, thank you all for um, uh, for listening to me, and I hope you learned something today. Yeah, sorry about that. I skipped out my thesis. I need to get up. Okay? Uh, do you want me to uh, turn this off? Or no. Just, just put the display mute on. Don't worry about the rest of it. Next person will figure it out. I <laughs> <laughs>
this one is like a little five foot. Dude, I'm barely over five feet. Right? <laughs> 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 it's a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick, uh, the visual is pretty dramatic as an attention device. I thought it was pretty clear where you were going with the speech from the be from the very beginning. Uh, the purpose of the ghillie suit was uh, nicely explained, although I do think that you, uh, you, you need to set up that structure a little bit more for the audience at the beginning. I think as you're going along, I can hear the places that you're heading in each of those spots, uh, but I didn't think it was as well laid out at the beginning as you might want it to be. Um, the delivery issues, uh, you are engaged with the audience for the most part. Uh, there are lots of gestures and facial expressions. Um, your eye contact is... Uh, really good with me. I'm not sure how good it is with the rest of the audience, you know. You're always talking to me, which I appreciate, but, you know, don't forget that there are 26 or 27 other people here. You know, so you, you need to pay attention to everybody that way. Um, I, I must have missed something. Some, I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Okay, uh, and then uh, the... It, I think you plan the visuals very well, I think you needed to practice them a little bit more yeah. because it does take you a while to get through the material. Uh, you're running late on the presentation, it's a couple minutes over, so you've got, you're gonna have to cut down on some things. Probably at the opening section, you're gonna have to make it uh, a minute shorter, and then the description of the process of making the suit probably needs to be another minute shorter. So there are places in those spots where you would probably do most of the cutting down. I, I want to know what was so funny about the kid, but I don't. I mean, I know he was there, and there was something about it that was amusing. I just don't know what was amusing. But you were amused by it, and I appreciated that. And, and I, you know, I, I gave Jason a hard time a minute ago, so I've got to give you one a hard time. Oh, I, Jacob. I said Jason. Jacob. I gave Jacob a hard time a minute ago. Sheep is plural. What? Sheep is plural, so there's no S at the end. All right. Yeah.